Let's do this. Let's do it. We are on day six of this pullback, and are you getting worried? Does it start to really hurt yet? Because if it does, that's normal. We are far from having confirmation that this bull market is over, so my personal worry level is very low. We did have some good news today. U.S. President Biden seems that he is intending to keep Jerome Powell, and this is bittersweet news, as it means it's likely that overprinting of money will continue to be the norm. Now, this is bad for people around the world, but great for those of us in crypto. Now, I don't ever wish pain on other people because of the overprinting of money. It's just a form of overtaxation that takes from the poor mostly, as they don't have assets that are overprinting proof like Bitcoin and actually some metaverse assets that we're going to talk about today. But if you are here, you are in the right place. You can't necessarily control if the U.S. and other countries around the world are going to overprint, but you can position yourself accordingly. Today I want to talk about the upcoming metaverse and what that might look like and some of my thoughts related to that as well as some projects that might give us some amazing returns. In fact, I'd say highly probable to give us some amazing returns. Now, these candidates I'll be talking about are likely to do really well. And I'll also point out two that have done very well and probably will continue to rise, but I tend to like the up-and-comers because the potential gains are higher. Well, I also want to show you a few games at the beginning of this that have some great potential. They are playable or soon to be playable, which is important for games this cycle. They haven't launched yet, so you can get in at the IDO price, and at that price, it's almost guaranteed for some gains. Now, we will also have our rain is always right segment. It'll be a little bit different than you think today and I'll explain. We'll take your questions as well and we'll thank our sponsors and partners Wanchain and NordVPN. Let's look over. We got Stardust Run in chat. We got Michael Rich looking for guidance on 10 to 50x alts. Some thoughts on ADA would be appreciated. Love your insights. Uh, when we get to the question and answer segment, I would love to talk about Cardano. It's a great time to be talking about Cardano. Welcome everyone to the Crypto Rain channel. I'm your host Jay Rain and if you like money in crypto and are looking for a real investor's take on the crypto market, join the Rainmaker family by liking this video. So go ahead and like it, take a second and subscribe if you haven't already with that all notifications button on. Let's also welcome our host in the command center with me, D Money. Our host, are you sure oh. that you want to upgrade me already? <laughs> yeah, I'll stay the producer. How does that sound? Yeah, go ahead. No, he's going to host today. You got it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll just take over from here. You can go uh, go take an early lunch or something. That'd like that would be awesome. <laughs> How was your weekend? It was fantastic. Right on, right on. I okay. started on this massive detox, uh, so we'll see how it goes. It's a three-month thing, but my wife is almost done with it, and it's had amazing results for her, so... It was expensive, but it's a good investment in money. So. Yeah, nice. Best of luck with that. Hopefully, it's not uh, wrecking havoc on you or anything like that. Uh, we'll see. The second month's supposed to be pretty rough. <laughs> so, well, maybe I'll be prepared to take over the hosting duties. <laughs> yeah, if it gets exactly. too rough. Exactly. I don't think anybody wants to see I'll that. I'll come though. here and I'll be like, "Hey, everyone, how are you? Gee, <laughs> money, I need you, man. Take over." <laughs> yeah, I, I can talk for five minutes. I gotta run to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Hey, let's get it started. Let's do it. All right, let's kick off today's show looking at the Bitcoin chart, and then I'll look at some gains. And let's take a little look at what's going on here. And what I want to point back is back to September. And do you remember September? Now, some of you were probably newer than September, but most of you were likely here. In September, it looked like it was going to go back towards that all-time high, and it faked everyone out at 52,000, and then it came down to 41,000, and people were panicking. And this is right before the end of the month. And what's funny is Plan B had had a prediction that it would be at 48000 at the end of the month. And sure enough, right at the end of the month, it ran all the way up at the 1st of October to 48000 Then it's run up since then. And I think coming into the end of November, I think in the coming days, we're going to be ready to finally take off to some higher highs that we've been looking for for a while. I always like to cover Bitcoin a little bit because it does set the trend. Now, over time, it's going to be less and less. 
but Bitcoin has been the big gateway for a lot of people into crypto. Now that's changing and will continue to change as some of these metaverses and other things take off, that they will actually become some of the gateways coming in and some of the crypto video games as well as Bitcoin. All right, let's jump to some up and coming games. Now there's gonna be a lot of games coming at us. So I'm looking specifically for some things on games that are interesting to me. Number one, the ability that they're coming through a launch pad, that way you can get some of the tokens for them and participate at the IDO because that IDO price is what's gonna make you a lot of money because sometimes these things pump 15X, 30X, 100X from the launch and you do not wanna be buying in at those tops. So the first one we'll take a look at is along the line of the type of games that I like, and this is Space Misfits. Um, it's got a quick mining guide here, and do we got audio for that? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Let's take a look. This gives you a little idea of what the Please game looks like. Survival no, I might have pressed the wrong one. Uh, well, this is the game the itself. Here's the mining guide. I was watching it earlier and wanted to share it with you. Uh, I might have messed this up. But anyway, it's, <laughs> it is a space game. I like the space games. I like the ones mining. Like one of the games that I really enjoyed playing was EVE Online. I actually made real life money on EVE Online before they banned you being able to sell items. And so I'm looking for that EVE Online game that is backed by crypto where they encourage selling assets that you've accumulated for money. EVE Online bans it. It will ban your account if they catch you doing it. They didn't used to ban it or enforce that ban, but this was back in 2003 or 2004, and it was a lot of fun to play a video game and earn real-life money by selling off some of those assets. And that's the beauty of where crypto gaming is going. And this one looks really interesting. Now, here's how I do some research on where to participate with them. So Space Misfits, I looked them up on Twitter. There we go. So they've got 6,000 followers so far. They haven't launched yet, but I always check their Twitter to watch and see what launch pads they're going to come out on. So here we don't have necessarily where they're launching yet. So they're still in the phase that they're announcing VCs and everything. So they will be announcing probably in the coming weeks what launch pads they're going to launch on. And you'll see these Twitter followers go up. But this one looks pretty interesting to me. It's got some first-person shooter stuff, some things that you can jump in your, uh, your starship and you can either go mine or you can fight. And they look like they're pretty close to being ready to market, and that's high on my interest list. The next one I want to look at is the Kill Box. This one is for your, um, for your phone, and for your phone it's pretty good graphics. So we're looking at Kill Box. Let's see, they've got... Ooh, almost 100,000 followers already. That's really, really good. Okay, TGE is happening November 23rd. So we have missed this. What launch pad is it coming to us on then? Now it's the winners. So it's coming on Red Kite. And so this one is already going to be launching. So it's launching tomorrow. If it comes out and the price doesn't go way, way up, that makes it attractive. Let's look at their website. I've got it pulled up here. So the kill box, this will be on your phone. For phone graphics, this is pretty good. And they actually, I've watched some different um, videos that they have. They actually have a Doge dog, and it's hilarious. It's like a grenade launcher. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, they're definitely market relevant for the crypto space here. Uh, so this one looks like we'll have to watch the price uh missed getting in at the ido if you haven't already whitelisted a lot of these come on c to five but you almost have to look game by game and uh see which one they're going to come out on so let's take a look at uh the next one i want to look at is crypto versus zombies and this is a tower defense game there we go and looks like so bin starter is going to be their ido and so bin starter is opened opening november 22nd closing december 8th so they're still in the whitelist period you can whitelist you will have to look at what the requirements are for bin starter to be able to participate let's see i've got their website pulled up here so you can get a little bit of feel for it now this is another game on your mobile device it's a tower defense game that you can play against other people and let's see will you hit the audio on that uh yeah it should be coming through 
Okay. I'm not hearing, are you? I am not, but uh, but I've... Well, go ahead and play it again. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing it come through. Perfect. Okay. So, it, you can play versus other players, and it's a tower defense game. I, that is good, the interaction of it. Um, and tower defense games are good because they're quick to market, and if the play is engaging, you can do pretty well. And so what I like about these good gaming projects that are coming out, if you're able to participate at the IDO, you're almost guaranteed some gains. How it goes from there, some take off and do 10x, some take off and do 50x, a few of them take off and do like 300x. I know we talked about Star Atlas here in enough time that some of our audience were able to get in on the IDO there. And so some of our audience, they were, the, you were limited as to how much you could get in, $200, $300 worth, but it went like 300x. And so even though you're starting at such a low amount, I mean, those kind of Xs are gigantic. So it's hard these days because there's so many launch pads to just hold any one launch pad token. It's kind of like you're looking at what, what ones you're interested in, which ones you're interested in, and then you're getting the launch tokens that correspond to that. Just looking over at chat here, getting a feel for what everyone's thinking. VRA is going parabolic. That's awesome. Killbox is also on Engine Starter. Good to know. I like Engine Starter. They came on this channel. I really liked uh, the team on that. The CEO was amazing. All right. Who wants to talk about the metaverses and my thoughts on the metaverses? Now, let's start the metaverse with a look back at two of the big metaverse projects that have been around. And Decentraland launched in 2017. They have the MANA token. And ever since Mark Zuckerberg did his video thing about the upcoming metaverses, all these tokens absolutely took off. But we're going to look a little bit deeper to where the money is. Yes, you could have made money on the Decentraland token. And when Mark Zuckerberg talked about it, this is exactly what happened. Now, let me ask you by commenting, oh, my camera is frozen. Or do I have it? Yeah, I don't know. It looks like it's live to me right now. Okay, Coming through we're good now. Yeah. You reset it. Yeah, thank you. Um, who is going to be interested in uh, Facebook's uh, metaverse? because I'm not going to. Anyone in here going to be participating in that at all? I'm not touching it. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. We'll see if some people chat in a little bit. I think there's a little bit of a lag. Um, and Doctor of Stuff just did say that the camera's not frozen. We got a, we got a hell no from Stevie Dalp. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I know, if, speaking of people in the room, uh, I certainly am not going to be. Um, I mean, how else are they going to, you know, to uh, steal everything that we have, right? You know, where yeah. we're the product um, that they're looking to, they're to like market. Come into our metaverse. It's free. Oh, wait, you don't really own your assets, and we're going to sell all your information even more than we are, and you can trust us. He reminds me a lot of that guy in Ready Player One. I said this before, but the bad guy in Ready Player One. Uh -huh, like yeah. that's what, when he was doing that video, I just couldn't help but see the similarities. You know, there's some differences. I get it, but he just seems so much like that guy. It's like, sorry, Mark. You know, I'm starting to understand too how um, the twins felt when Mark Zuckerberg stole Facebook from them completely, right, and cut him out. And uh, I. I <laughs> Yeah, I just don't trust that guy, and I think many of you probably feel the same. So, yeah, hell no for me, too, <laughs> on Mark Zuckerberg. I'll have nothing to do with that. I'm not even going to, like, cover how to play it or anything on this game. Yeah. The only thing I'll, the only coverage I'll give it is trash talking it, because I just don't trust the guy, and I, I don't trust his team and any people behind it. Chris uh, Chris speaks for the entire country of Germany and says that Germany <laughs> is not going to be participating. Right. <laughs> All right. So now Decentraland's token has done well. But you know what's done better than Decentraland's token? Because it came out, and I can't remember the ICO price. It was like... One cent or something, and it went all the way to like 10 cents. Ooh, 21 cents at the top of that market. And then the bear market came down to about four. And then it's gone crazy, right? But you know where the money was made? The money was made on the land. Let me pull up this. So you could have got this land at the IDO for 90 bucks. 
and depending on where that piece of land is. So this is the lowest price. This is the floor price right now for the land at their launch that you could have gotten. It was about $90. I th don't remember. I, I don't think they had it set up that you could pay on their token yet. It was like $90 worth of ETH. Of course, ETH was probably about $400 at the time. So now they $90 worth of ETH and it's going for 3.2 ETH. Yeah, what's cool. he trading at grand. today? <laughs> yeah. yeah, something like Roughly that. Roughly fifteen grand is the floor price. So from ninety dollars to fifteen grand. So land in these metaverses is where the money is, but the metaverse has to get adoption. So it's key with who's behind the team and what kind of partnerships they're making as to whether it will get traction. Now I don't know if Decentraland is going to make it. They continue to try to improve it. I still think we're a long way from the metaverse being a reality. But if you look at the interest, other people are getting it too, that this land could be very, very valuable. And I use the word could. Now let me share with you, I am not buying any Decentraland land at these prices. And it could go to 150000 from here. It's just the risk versus the return is high. A lot of the gains have already been made. If you took that, ro that ride from $90 to 15,000, that's a very good ride. All right, on to the other, wow. Okay, I just started Discord here. <laughs> Discord's gonna go ahead and, okay, interrupt the stream, I'm sure. All right, so back to, let's see, I wanna look at the other one that's done really well is uh, Decentraland, or excuse me, the Sandbox. And the sandbox, uh, they they have been selling pieces of land in different waves for literally two years now. Their token's done pretty good. You could have got their token way back here for three or four cents. When Mark Zuckerberg talked about metaverses, they absolutely took off here. So from seventy-five cents went all the way to four thirty-seven. But let me share with you where the land prices are because that's what's really interesting here. Let's go to Sandbox Collection. All right, so these are the floor level on buy now. We didn't look at the auction because that doesn't reflect what it's actually selling for, so we're only looking at buy nows. So we saw that Sand Token is selling for about 430, and so this is going for 3,122 is the ask price on that. So what is that? Fifteen thousand dollar floor price again. Yeah, once again, and it's amazing. And these are just like your basic pieces, and they're going for fifteen thousand dollars and up. Now, I was able to get some of these like a year ago, and what was funny is the way last year played out is there was a cycle for NFTs in gaming, and I tried to participate in the sandbox land sale, and like it sold out like this. But what's funny in this space is that people forget and they're always looking at what's happening right now and they forget to look what was hot three months ago and is out of cycle. So it was out of cycle and I was able to pick up two pieces. I, I think I paid about $90 or $100 a piece for them. So now the floor is 15000 Now right now we're in cycle. Everyone's focused on Decentraland and Sandbox. Everyone's talking about Metaverses. So is it the best time to be buying these Metaverses? That's not what I do. I look for what's boring, right? Another metaverse, kind of, it's a gaming universe, and we'll talk about, and this is one that I made a lot of money on. This is the land for Axie Infinity, and these are the cheapest plots. And notice that the cheapest plots floor is also about $15,000. Oh, there's one going for $13,500, so what 10% a deal. off. Yeah. <laughs> these sold for like $5 when it launched. And let me, let me share with you what that looked like. So... I've got it pulled up. This was the Axie Infinity sale. And um, on day one, you could get a 10% discount on all chests day one. I think I heard about it day two. And all the Savannah land was sold out. At the time, ETH was trading for about 80 bucks, And so a 0.5 ETH would be 1 20th of $80. So what, $4? Yeah, yeah. So this is what that is going for now. $4, <laughs> and it's going for $15,000. So... Not a bad ride up, although what's funny is I was right on this, but I was wrong before I was right. And this often happens with me. I was like, this is going to be huge. And then for 18 months, it did absolutely nothing. And then it took off. And so 
for a while I thought I was wrong, but I was like, I'm so stubborn. I'm like, no, I'm right on this. I'm going to hold on. And sure enough, I was. It did tremendous numbers. Jay, when, when was that? that, that uh, <laughs> Two and a half. Was it 20, 2017 well, that this know, happened? It shows January 22nd. Um, I think this was like 2019. Yeah, it had to be 2019. So January 22nd, 2019, yeah. if you were here in crypto winter. So this is why I say stick around for crypto winter, because this is where some of these great deals come out, the likes of which we don't see right now. However, we're going to look at some good up and coming ones. Now, that kind of deal, you know, some of it's priced in because we're in the hype cycle. But these are the ones that I'm really interested in. And the first one we'll talk about is Cornucopias. And this is kind of like a gaming metaverse, like it's a game that'll have its own like universe for it. and then we'll have its own land and this is cornucopias and it's called the island awaits but cornucopias actually is gonna is a game studio that's gonna have several games this first one the island awaits is gonna be a fun one there are some great amas with the founders that you can look up and see some history on it and what their vision is but I'm really interested in this one, and they will be having a land sale. I don't have details on that because I'm still waiting for that land sale. But this is one to pay attention to. They do have a token that will be coming out. I don't think it's out yet. Have you seen it? No, I heard. Oh, God, when did I hear? I, I think that it's next month. I think it's December okay. of, 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 of 21 is when the idea was. And that, that's frequently the case. Their token comes out first. Sometimes you then have to use the token to buy the land. Sometimes you don't. Every every project has their own way to get a hold of it but this is one to look for land and hopefully metaverse are completely out of the cycle so that like you can actually pick some up because i think this one will be a good one another one i want to talk about that i think has good potential is gaia everworld and they're doing some really interesting things they did have a gaia nft mint that they're still out here and i actually minted like 12 of these so bunch now i just don't have my wallet connected so they're not showing up here but they are on the eth chain so if you're going to mint them the cost isn't unreasonable i think they're 0 0.08 what is unreasonable is the eth transaction fees to mint it and they do have a solution that they're working on so that you can mint them on another chain which will save a lot of money because the eth fees right now to mint something is like 150 to 200 dollars which is equal to the cost of a lot of things so thankfully, uh, they're working that out. But what we're interested in is they are having a land sale coming up. And I think we'll be getting details on this soon. This is one I'm looking for. It's interesting. They're, they're using, in fact, we have a video. We can probably give you a little bit of a preview here on. Their graphics are really cool. And there are some Gaia. So this is a character that somebody's got. But there are some Gaia in the planet that are these interesting looking creatures and that is what you can mint right now so they're battling some of the creatures i like this graphic and they're using unreal engine 5. that's really cool so clearly some mountable creatures um so watch Gaia Everworld in their land and be prepared for it because when these come out, unless they completely go out of cycle, they're going to be hot. And so you do have to be watching close to be able to participate in those land sales. Another one that looks really interesting, though I wish we had more details on it, and I've covered it before, is Metaspatial. And they're going to have these different portals that go to these different worlds. So this is in the realm of more like Sandbox or... Decentraland, where it's its own universe only. This is kind of like its own multiverse because you can take these different portals to go to different parts. And I did see this video where like they have a portal and you're using a VR headset and you can walk through that portal. And so they will have VR for this. Now realize that a lot of these are still a long ways away from being reality. So the way I see the metaverse stuff playing out is it's gonna go crazy this cycle and you're gonna see some big appreciation. And then guess what? The market's gonna collapse, and this always happens. And then people will lose interest, they will stop paying attention, and that's when all of these get cheap again. So I intend to take some of the ride up this cycle and take a lot of profits out on these. Why? So that I can buy them cheap during the crypto winter. Watch and make sure the teams are still actively working. 
and then buy low because this cycle will play out again. Decentraland was really hot in 2017. Oh my gosh, it's going to be the next big thing. And um, the token pumped all the way to 21 cents and then it went all the way down to 4 cents. And that's not a terrible retracement compared to what a lot of projects did. But that's still, would you rather be buying at 21 cents or at 4 cents? Now, what is interesting is the land for it didn't really retrace, though I do think now we have so many different projects coming out that we're like a lot more likely to see some big retracements on some of the land prices. I mean, Axie Infinity, let me share with you the land that I did buy. And so I, I didn't get any of these Savannah plots. You can see a few forest plots here. I did have some of those. But I, I bought about 20 of these Mystic plots, and these Mystic plots are going for 70 k right now. Floor price. I had 20 of them, and I sold them. Unfortunately, the last ones I sold for 2500 each. I sold five of them at that price. And it's like, huh. And I rolled that into other money. If I still hold, held on to them, they would be at 70000 floor price now, and some of them going for higher. Now, look at this. They're Genesis plots. <laughs> Woo. Good heavens. Now, this was kind of luck of the draw. See, there's this central area. In fact, I think I have. This is what the map looks like. And right around here is the Genesis plots. And you had to get lucky. Like, if you bought some lots, uh, by luck, you would randomly possibly win one of these Genesis lots. And that's what's going on there. Now, unfortunately, they've only released a quarter of the map. So at some point, they're going to come out with another quarter of the map, which is why I had to sell and I couldn't continue holding. Right after I sold all mine, they did announce, oh, we're going to wait a long time before we sell round two of the land because my worry was at some point the price has gone way up. They sell round two, and it totally drops the price. But look at these Mystic prices. Do you think maybe they might have some retracement in the crypto winter? I don't know. We don't even know what Axie Infinity's gameplay is like for the land, and so we don't know how usable this, uh, this is. This is all based on speculation. And so at this price, I could not enter. I was talking to somebody who's heavy into Axie, and he's like, I think the best deal in the world is the Axie Infinity land. You can get a Mystic plot for just $70,000. And I was like, I'm sorry. I, I have to pass at that price. It's just I don't know that it's crypto winterproof at all. Now, will it go up from here? Probably. And then it will go down below this is my guess. It's just realized a bunch of its gains already. So that's not what I'm interested in because here in this channel, we buy cheap in order to sell high. So one of the upcoming metaverses I'm really excited about is Network. And I've covered this channel since back in March, I believe. And they did their token launch way back then and their token did well. And then it retraced, which is normal, especially because everything retraced since March and April. And then it's recently taken off again. But they've, they're they doing some kind of vehicle sale, and these vehicles will be usable in their universe as well as to teleport you. This is going to take probably four to five years to develop, even though they've already been working for a year to year and a half. But they do have land that will be released soon, and there is a land sale I think you can participate in. They've had different rounds that you could participate in through some of the launch pads. I think they're going to have a public round coming up soon, so watch for that. Yes, they're expensive. They're not $15,000 expensive for a base level one, and so that's probably your exit sign. Whatever you pay for it, if it's like $3,000 for a basic piece of land, 15000 is probably your exit point one if you picked up a couple of those. But watch for this one because they do have significant partnerships around with a lot of other gaming projects, so they've got potential yeah, to do well. That's what I was going to point out. And if you scroll down just a little bit, you can see all of the all the partners that they have, right? Like, oh, you just passed it. So, like, um, up a little bit more. Yeah, just like all, you know, there's there's network and, and Meta Wars and, and Meld and Gaia Everworld. Like they're they're making all these partnerships, which I, which is the in my opinion the right play, right? Um, you know, you get publicity from from that uh, mm -hmm. from all those people, right? Uh, the followers of Gaia, the followers of of, Met, of Meta Wars or whatever um, to promote the, your own your own metaverse and uh, anyway I see huge things from that like yeah Angry Ape Army is buying some network land and then in order to 
come onto their net their network island, you have to have one of their NFTs. And this is just smart usage, right? This is why I think they're probably going to be around for long term. So there's probably some potential to make some money off their land for the coming months. But then if you buy a number of pieces, I might encourage you to diversify out at some good exit points just to be cash um, cash rich for the crypto winter. Now, we don't know for sure how it's going to play out on this land, if it is going to um, go down in value. But I can tell you, I participated in this land sale for Axie Infinity and the values dropped off after I bought those chests. You, I could have bought back the same items I essentially got through the chest for about half to a third of what I paid for it. And it really didn't start to pump till much later. So my guess is we see some retracements even on the metaverse land, especially the stuff that's already at really high numbers. And my hope is some of the stuff that isn't at high numbers get a chance to get some and then it can go up to those high numbers. All right. I want to talk about the metaverse that I'm most excited about that no, I can't say nobody's talking about. Nobody outside the Akomi community is talking about it. And that's the Viviverse. And one of the reasons why nobody outside of the Akomi ecosystem is talking about it is because they're not generally aware of it because Akomi has been keeping it on the down low. And they did this with their own Vivi app. And this is why I invested in the Komi presale. And I didn't even realize Vivi's app had come out till February when their token had already been pumping. Why? <laughs> because they just work behind the scenes and develop and then they release things at their own timing. But they aren't the ones that are first to run to the mics and say, oh my gosh, look at this, right? And so they have been developing the Vivi verse for a couple of years because we know because they they trademarked it two years ago. And so that tells you they've had this in mind and they're developing some things. I wish we knew more about what it would look like, but this is one to absolutely keep your eye on. A couple of things. The project is already operating and doing really well based on their NFT sales. So they're cash rich. They're not just coasting off some funds that they raised from an ICO. They actually have revenues coming in and that's significant. That's especially significant going into this crypto winter. They're not likely to go anywhere. They're not likely to wither away and die. They'll just keep working and probably keep selling NFTs and probably have a continuous cash influx. So let's look at their price. I mean, if we look at what these token prices have done, they went from, this is Decentraland, and their token price just had a huge spike when they started talking about Metaverse. And their market cap is now at 5.1 billion. Sandbox's market cap isn't too far away from that at 3.9 billion. Ecomi's market cap on their token is just 1.6 billion. So it's about one third of the market cap of Decentraland. However, most of people just think of Ecomi as an NFT project. And what they aren't realizing is how this is going to come together with the VVverse and that probably is going to be an incredible metaverse project that I think will do well because they already have all these great partnerships, all these great uh, connections to some of the top artists and other things in the world. Like for them to call Ford and GM and say, hey, bring, you know, your, uh, your Ford Mustang into our game or GM, hey, bring your Corvette or bring this into the game. It's not a big deal that they're at the level that they can get those kind of connections. And so this is one to not go off your radar. They're undergoing a little bit of pain as they're still going off the Go chain to Immutable X. I think they actually minted copies of everything from Go chain over to um, Immutable X. They're still trying to get the money transmitters license done and then be able to have your stuff tradable on OpenSea. Yeah, they said that they're the, the last uh, on their last. Um AMA on Twitter, they said that uh, I think they're in phase two out of three as far as the the, the immutable X uh, bringing the NFTs over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but but the thing about Acomi or uh, about the VV verse, like like when I and and I don't know if everybody has seen or read Ready Player One. We've referenced it already on this on this show, and we've referenced it be before. But to me. VVverse has the best chance of feeling like Ready Player One because mm -hmm. while while some of these you know NFTs you saw like the the Gaia guys or whatever they're even called the um, the the guys the Gaias. That, the Gaias that you can mint like like those are cool um, but like 
that's not as cool as driving around in a DeLorean, right? And, like, they already have that. Like, that's not as cool as the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters or Slimer or freaking, you know, Storm from X-Men that just dropped over the weekend, right? Like, those are the types of things that, that when I think about Ready Player One and I think about an awesome metaverse to be a part of, like, that's what I think about. Yeah, and key, because, like, if you think about it, Guy Everworld is a game with their own universe, and a metaverse is truly just a metaverse that will only be interesting if they do have gaming partners to have games that you can go and do. Like Ready Player One, if you think about it, they're walking around, but what do they do? They go participate in a driving game. And they go participate in this other world where it's like a first-person shooter that they can get this loot and stuff. And so Vivi's building a game like that which has everyone's interest. We all watch that movie, Ready Player One, and we're looking for who's going to create that and guessing it who it will be. So I like that they're developing. They do have some advantages. When when you go ahead and release something like Decentraland did, you kind of pigeonhole yourself a little bit, and you see that with Ethereum, right? Because now they're trying to upgrade what they have rather than to design it from the beginning because one of the big problems with metaverses is how do you handle so many people playing it and that's a problem video games are working on one video game that's been in development now for like 10 years is star citizen and it's a centralized game it would be amazing if they went to crypto but that would probably delay them by like another four years but the problem they're having is how do you have so many players on it and not crash everything and that's not even figured out by star citizen they've been working on this for a long time Decentraland has some problems. If you play Decentraland, you get into where there's like 25 people at a time and it, everything bogs down because handling this is still an ongoing problem to be solved. And so it's probably something that also Vivi is working on for their Vivi first. Um, how it gets solved, I don't know. The technology out there to solve it, to be able to have 20,000 people in a gaming world that they can do whatever they want at the same time probably possibly the technology not even quite there yet but probably be invented through the blockchain side of things i i would that's my best guess um real quick we'll talk about ring is always right i just want to check the comments see what's going on in the comment section yeah i just threw this one up on the screen what exchange to get omi dauntless asks um bitforex is what a lot of us use and we have a bitforex referral link which you can use or not use um but that does help make sure you get to the right one um, if you can find that and grab it from one of our ones and put it right in the chat. Yeah, I will. Bit4x seems to work pretty good. I've had no problems getting on and off, like sending money in, sending money out. So, um, but there are a number of ones. One of the ways you look is actually we're here on the page. So if you go to CoinGecko and you go to Markets, it'll give you, okay, you can get on BitMax, Bit4x, Gate.io, OKX. So I would recommend one of these two. Bitforex or Gate.io. Um, I've used Bitforex a little bit cheaper there right now for some reason. So probably Bitforex. But I've had no problems with them. All right. AP Meta, VRA UFO, please. Veracity is one I covered earlier this year. Um, Yes, nice. Okay, so it is on a nice retracement. This is where it starts to get interesting again. I don't chase green candles, but look, $261 million market cap. They've got, looks like, one-fourth of their total supply is currently in circulation. And they're on a big retrace. They went all the way to $0.08 since 31st of October, so they've been retracing for about a month. So for all of October, they went crazy. They're pulling back like this. I haven't checked their website in a while to find out. Esports and video entertainment. So esports, obviously video games. Um, I, I haven't checked out what their technology is doing. That's my only hold back on VRA. I haven't gotten updated on their technology. Their pricing though looks attractive. This is exactly during a bull run. When I buy, if I'm getting into something, I don't buy it when it's just climbing straight up like this. I look for a pullback. I draw it out on trading view, and um, I look for a good entry. So how I do that is VRA. I always check it versus Tether, so it's on KuCoin. 
So currently I use this, the fib retracement. Essentially I draw here, came up to here. And so I look for entry lines below the 0.5 or the 0.618, but it hit below 0.5. In fact, it's not far from there right now. So, you know, buying the pullback is always a little bit scary. It's like catching a falling knife. And this has made me a lot of money buying the pullback. A lot of people don't do this. Buy, buy the pullback, and I don't throw all my money in in case it comes down lower. And then if it does, I just buy in more, and then I buy in more. Which brings us right to the rain is always right segment. Now, sometimes I'm wrong before I'm right, and one of the very best examples of that was Axie Infinity Land. I bought at the land sale, and you see how cheap those prices are. But they did retrace, actually, from there. When the marketplace was open, you could exchange the land. Like, I paid one ETH for a Mystic plot, so at the time ETH was trading for about 80 bucks. And when Mystic plots were tradable, you also got some other things. They, they dropped all the way to, like, 0.3 ETH. So now they're going for $72,000, but I was wrong before I was right. However, I'm stubborn enough that I'm like, look, they've got a good game, a good game design. There's just people selling off and people panicking out. And so I, it does shock me how frequently that happens, that people sell below their acquisition price rather than just being patient. But it happens all the time, and so I just let it happen. And so when I buy into things on a retracement like VRA, it can get cheaper, and I just know that. So I keep some money on the sidelines, and then I just buy cheaper, and then I buy cheaper. So two of the projects I've covered, let's talk about Solend. And Solend has absolutely retraced to below their IDO price, which is interesting. When I did look at one of the things that interested me was that their pre-sale people, investors, were locked up for like two or three years. And so I didn't think there'd be any ability for them to dump, just the people who participated at the IDO. And so at the IDO, it was $6. So it initially pumped up. It's retraced all the way down here below IDO price. And that's crazy to me. But you do start to see the drop falling off. So is this a good acquisition price? Well, I'm interested in Solend. I'm still interested in Solend. Why people are selling at these prices, I don't know. I'm happy they are. I'll pick up some later today. And anywhere below $6 is like just a gift to me. Do I know they'll do well? No, we never know that it will do well. I didn't know that Axie Infinity would do well. It was just an educated guess, and it was likely to do well. But at the time, it was three people working in an office, and like it was a little bit scary to invest in Axie Infinity. Did it come together well? Yeah, it did. They were early. It was the right narrative. They ended up getting backed by Animoca Brands, which is a big deal. And um, they've done tremendously. So Soul Lend, they're backed by Coinbase. They're backed by... Um, Sam Bankman Freud and, and Alameda Capital. So they're backed by the right backers. They probably have a really good future. They'll probably get listed on Coinbase. And now it's just that period when everyone's momentum is focusing on other things. Some of the momentum is focusing away from Solana, which is fine. C Cardano, we I told you I'd talk about Cardano. Cardano's been out of the narrative for a while. And this is what I do. It's as simple as this. I find strong projects that are out of the narrative. And then I buy them when people are panic selling out like this. But that there's good reason to believe they do have a good future. And this is when I buy. So I started loading up back here at $9. Went all the way up here. I didn't take any profits because I have a lot higher expectations from here. I loaded up some more at the $7 range, not knowing if it would keep dropping, and it has, which is a blessing because now I can pick up some more at cheaper prices. Um, I wanted to bring you a quick update on one that I covered a lot, um, Formation Finance. Now, they did get hacked uh, to the tune, and it was a flash loan attack, and this happens on a lot of DeFi protocols. Thankfully, the hackers were only able to get about 200000 in value, and the team did track it to the Binance account they sent the funds to. Binance has frozen those funds and is doing an audit, so this is just kind of a way to slow down hackers from being able to use those funds, and maybe they'll be able to get those funds back. But they did have a hack, and so that's great because it tanks the price and makes for some good pickups. Now, if you recall, I covered this before they launched, and I didn't know how they would do, and I said below $0.10, cents, it gets really, really interesting. But they never hit below $0.10. Cents. 
and there was reason to believe they probably never would. But now that they had this hack, and this kind of hack is a very solvable thing, it's, in my opinion, I've seen this a lot of times on DeFi protocols, and they always bounce back from it. And formation will bounce back from this, is my guess. And so at 10 cents, it's not quite under 10 cents, but it's finally almost to that really attractive price. Now, unfortunately, um, I'm full. I have <laughs> about $200,000 worth of formation. So am I going to be buying more? I might. If it goes down to 5 cents, I won't be able to help myself but buy more, right? Because it's like too good to pass up. But uh, yeah, I don't care. I'm not going to take any uh, exits on this price. I did load up for cheap, so it was good. But at this price, I, I, I don't sell at a loss. I just wait. So no worries there. Um, for On my side, I'm not worried about it. Um, love to jump over to the question and answer segment so we can give as much time. Yeah, we got about 10 minutes for this. So, Perfect. Um, right, uh, Nibble Knowledge just asked, he said, uh, would love your thoughts on Realm. Realm. I don't know anything about Realm. Well, Rain's looking that up. But just for people who are wanting to submit questions, it is helpful if you can give us a little bit more info about it and what you like about the project. Yeah, or any the other comments going to take. I'll look through and pick out some comments, but please don't just give us ticker symbols. I like. I know that works on other channels. I'm definitely not other channels. I like to look at what you like. Um, I'm interested in seeing the research that you've already done, not just jumping into it because somebody mentioned a ticker symbol. So give us a ticker symbol, but tell us what you like about it. That's That's been my style since the beginning of this channel. So tell us what you like about it, what's good about it, what you don't like about it. The more information you put in there, the more likely I am to pick what you're asking us to look at. So realm.art. So this is just how I do my research. When I don't know anything about it, I first look it up on CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap. Okay, so create and explore into your own play to earn microverse. Uh, you know, these graphics are fun. I like that part of it. You know, they went kind of a uh, fun character look. Looks like pretty customizable, yet simple enough that it won't bog down the ecosystem too much. Hmm. Realm token address on ETH and Binance Smart Chain is that. Okay. Looks like it'll be on your phone. Infinite Realms, the air portals transport you. Hmm. See what we can find out about their token here. So they've been out for a little while. Whew. They, wow. Yeah, they had some big news. So I, I can't buy now. No way. Um, unless I can find significant information that leads me to believe it's just going to keep going crazy from here. Huh. Yeah, wow, missed this one for sure. Look at that volume, and that's pump with the price. And so they, this looks like they just made a big announcement. So this is one to keep track of, because what's funny is projects always get a point, to a point where they're boring again, and people have kind of moved on. Think about Cardano. I was looking back through, I was through YouTube, and I saw a suggested video from BitBoy's channel three months ago that was all about Cardano. I remember it about three months ago. It's like every video he was doing was on Cardano. Why? Because Cardano was solidly in the narrative. And so when is a great time to be thinking about Cardano? Now. When is a bad time to be loading up on Cardano? At like when it was at $3. Now, what I do like about Cardano is when you buy it, you can stake it and you can start earning staking rewards, which is fantastic. And I like the long term for Cardano. But um, thinking at when things are out of narrative, like keeping track of them, think of how much money I would have saved on Axie Infinity if I hadn't bought the chest and waited till they were out of narrative, right? Yeah. Um, it was unclear. We didn't have any patterns to look at when they did the land chest sale of what the land could do, but it did end up dropping down. So right now, Realm is clearly in narrative and probably some news that came out. And things often retrace at least a good chunk of this and get more attractive. And it doesn't. We just don't chase boats we already missed. All right. Let me look through and see what I want to talk about. Pyre, no VCs. Pyre, great tokenomics. This is from Martin Zickmund. Great tokenomics. No VCs to dump land is already scarce. I bought it $9 and wish I bought more. So we'll thank you. That's the kind of research I like to see. Vulcan Forged, it looks like, is probably what it is, right? Ooh, you bought it at 9. It's gone to 28. Good job, brother. 
Mm. All right, so it traded sideways for a while, generally up, and then it broke out and it's been going crazy. Let's look at market caps at half a billion. Yep, all its supply um, is 50 million, and let's see, about 40% of that, almost 40% is in circulation. Blockchain game and DAP. So it's a DAP platform. Okay, and so they have kind of a turn-based card game as well as interesting. I haven't heard of this one, but I think a lot of these ecosystems where they have like lots of games coming through, if you think about like many versions of Steam, I, I think some of these will do well. So my guess is, good job, brother. You uh, did really well on this. Um, it hasn't hit a double top. Probably it's going to continue up from here. The chart is suggesting that. Um, it might try it sideways for just a little bit and probably resume. We're about to get into December, and I'll be shocked if December isn't just another record month. I mean, it has been last cycle, the cycle before that. We'll see how this plays out. There's no guarantee because just because it normally does that it will but I think we have significant gains ahead of us. And so what we're looking to do is take good positions that are hopefully even out of narrative that can ride up really well. I don't like buying, like we talked about earlier, I'm not going to buy Decentraland's land at these prices. Um, I'm not going to buy Axie Infinity's land at these prices. I'm totally going to look for deals on other metaverses that I think have good potential and pick up some of them, their land, especially if I can get it for a lot lower price, like Network's land, and then um, sell when the base unit hits like $15,000 or whatever. I'm looking for those kind of deals. I do like to buy what's out of narrative and then hold it. Soland is out of narrative. This one's in narrative, but probably still has a way to go. It hasn't had like a two-week parabolic move. It has come up from $9 to 26 Just the traje trajectory it's showing is still probably going to continue. Uh, while you're talking about Soland, um, somebody asked, I can't remember where it was, but they did ask where they can buy it. Golzaman um, Khan, where can we buy Soland? So the way I research it, it's on Solana, right? So you can buy it on the FTX exchange. FTX is one of their backers, and so it is already tradable on a centralized exchange, which is usual, unusual for something that's come out so recently. So a lot of people are buying it on the um, with the Phantom wallet, Phantom with a PH. That's a Solana wallet where you do have to save off the private keys. And then you, trading it on radium. So let's see uh, markets. Radium. You're looking for radiums exchange. And I, I like to find these on either Nomex. It doesn't do a good job on CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko for a lot of these Solana ecosystem projects. So I use Nomex for all of that when I'm looking up a Solana project. And then um, just go to Radium here, and then you're trying to get to their website, which I was thinking they would have a link here, but I, there we go. You want to make sure you actually download the actual, like, app and get their wallet. And so one of the ways that scammers will get you is they'll pay on Google and they'll make up a mock site that looks just like it, and they'll pay um, Google to be listed at the top. And so you think you're going to Radium. So always be careful. Anytime you're trying to get a wallet or something, don't just go to Google and search it. I look on CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko and try to take links through there. Not ever on the paid ad section, because you never know on that, but on the actual project, just following what we did. We end up finding their website and go to it that way. So um, scammers will get you with those ads. I lost $8,000 two years ago. I haven't fallen for a scam there, but I was trying to participate in an ICO that I was watching for forever. They did exactly that. And um, the website looked exactly the same. And instead of an I, they had an L, which made it look exactly the same. And so, yeah, just sent him eight ETH. So what's eight ETH worth today? A lot more than it was then. At the time, ETH was trading for $1,000. So I lost $8,000. <laughs> Yeah. I I only cried for 10 minutes. 
a day for 20 days or so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, another good question, I think, uh, here from Joe Paul. I don't know, A-I-O-Z seems to have similar. AOs. AOs. Similar yeah, so this is the power surrender. This is the power of crypto banter, and he mentioned it, right? And what's funny is I actually like his show. I, I like him, uh, his personality a lot, and he's been in the space for a long time. He's only had his channel for a short amount of time, but he was an anchor at MSNBC covering NBC, MSNBC Africa, covering cryptocurrency, so he has a lot of connections. And so he mentioned it, and, you know, he's got 400,000 subscribers. Now, if you notice, he'll be like, oh, I'm always right. Well, when he mentions something, then, like, you know, 50,000 people go in and buy it, and it takes off. So we have been covering AOS while it was down tracing, and so we were talking about it all the way down here. It has pumped, and I, I think this one has a lot more potential to go. So I'm not taking any profits out on it yet, although... I wish I had more AOS than I did. I did have to free up some AOS here to buy something. I didn't want to sell any AOS, but there was something that was a better deal I had to buy. And so I don't have as much AOS as I used to. If I had as much AOS as I used to, I would be taking a little bit of profits on it. Just because it's 4x from our buy zone when I, I bought a crap ton right around 20 cents. And so at 80 cents, I could pull out my whole initial and have free bag. I think I put initially 20K into this. So um, then it's just a free ride from here because I do expect it'll do a lot better in the coming months than where it's at even now. Even though it's gone up a lot, look at where it was. Ooh. So um, at least it'll retake its, it'll hit its previous highs and then probably go ahead of them. So AOS, one of those fundamental projects that I like to look at, buy when it's out of narrative, and then when it gets fully in the narrative, sell. Right. Um, where are we at on time? We yeah, ta just time, pretty much time to wrap, yeah. want to thank you all for joining us. I do want to thank our sponsors, Juan Chain. Um, that's great for them to sponsor us. They have some of the best cross-chain compatibility out there, the cross-chain bridges that can bring things over in a trustless way. And that was really cool of them to sponsor us. I've covered it for forever. I hold a huge bag in the one-chain ecosystem because I'm a big believer in them. And so it's kind of like if you wear, you've been wearing Nikes for like five years and Nike comes to you and says, hey, can you we sponsor you? You're like, uh, yeah, okay. You know, <laughs> thank you. I already wear everything Nike, but appreciate it. And so that, that's been a great sponsor for us. We appreciate that. We also appreciate all the people that have joined our Patreon. Thank you. Also, if you want to be part, better part of the conversation, join our Telegram below. Also, if you do join our Patreon, you do get access to our private Discord. And there's different levels of that. But I always check Discord first and answer questions there. And then if I have any time, I go to Telegram. But Discord gets my highest priority. And to get to the Discord, you have to be a Patreon member. Thank you all for joining us. We appreciate your support. It's going to be a wild ride. I'm really looking forward to the rest of this bull run. It's going to be amazing. We'll be talking about taking profits so that we can be very cash liquid when things get really cheap. And then I'm going to be buying again and taking the whole next wave up. And I think many of you are joining me for that fun. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time. And all of the hype trains But like in life, uh Shit, right before you could It was taught to buy when it was pouring like a rain Make it sure I buy when it's down Don't chase the boats that I miss, uh Cause I always made the time in mind I sit the one out Cause I'm patient like that And I'll wait for the right time I sell when it's high I buy when it's low They call me rich They call me smart I'm just a rainmaker Running the show Calculated investments I don't leave with my heart uh, Principles are simple They're leaving a mark Buy when it's boring Just gotta be smart I sell when it's hype Like all the channels they pump it That's when I was selling The parabolic they dunk it They call me rich They call me smart I'm a rainmaker Making my own star I'm with the future Learning the past Makes the time fly by Years going so fast The game plan is mine I'll own it now When I reach the top Haters asking me how Cause I'm a rainmaker Investments I love And I follow what I learn Not relying on luck uh, The time is never better The time like the present This next five years is a gift And it's feeling like heaven it I'm is. committed to learn 
study in to know that Nothing comes easy but when knowledge again gain show Seeking out this wrong cause soon will come a bear market We're learning and growing and when it's slow would be the target They say it's come out, Bitcoin is dead The massive decreases can get to your head Seeking around, the time is better I'm strong like that, I'll let the others be fretters Two years time the ball will bring back the gains That makes it worth the effort cause here comes the rain So let's go rain makers, let's make it all happen The goal with the hate, they the haters be crappy I'm here for five years, let's do this together The time is right, the time could be better They call me rich, they call me smart I'm a rainmaker, making my own start I'm with the future, learning the past Amazing time fly by, years going so fast This game plan is mine, I'll own it now When I reach the top, haters asking me how Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck uh, Haters be hating Time to slow down Addressing what they say when I'm wearing my crown They're chasing green candles like someone who was new I got a vision that was bigger helping me to push through I'm still human and sometimes it is rough And that's what makes me special, simply I stay tough Cause I'm a rainmaker, investments I love And I follow what I learn, not relying on luck uh.